uh, in the interest of time, we're going to forego the invitation song, and we are going to transition uh, to the time of the Lord's Supper and rededication of our church and the, uh, the covenant. So everybody, I'm going to ask you to stand for prayer with me while we get the kids back from Children's Church, and uh, the deacons can come down and, and, and take their spot uh, after this prayer, and we will move right along into the Lord's Supper. Father, we thank you for all that you've given us. We thank you for your love and your kindness, and I just pray that you would be with us today. Lord, <clears throat> as this is all metaphor and symbol, these wafers we bought, this grape juice that came from the same grocery store that we normally frequent, Lord, as it is all symbolic, I pray that we would focus our hearts on you who really did hang from a tree. And if anyone here has never partaken of you, I pray that today would be the day of salvation, that they would decide that they do, in fact, want to partake of you and be a part of God's family so that they can have something inside of them that gives them new life. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. From 1 Corinthians 11, 23 and 24. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. As he commanded, we celebrate his death by taking the bread as his broken body and drinking the cup to commemorate his shed blood. This is a celebration for believers only. If you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and become one of his followers by baptism, then we invite you to take this Lord's Supper with us today. If you have not trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior or have not yet followed him in baptism, please do not take the Lord's Supper with us today. Please just watch. If there is a grudge or complaint that has separated you and one of your brothers or sisters in Christ, the scriptures have warnings against you taking the Lord's Supper today. Paul even warned the Corinthians that the reason some of them had gotten sick and even died was they had taken the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner. <clears throat> if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, have been biblically baptized, and you are in good standing with your fellow Christians, you are welcome to take the Lord's Supper with us today. To inaugurate the new year for our church, Brother Larry will lead us in a reading of the church covenant, and then I would like to read the prayer that Jesus prayed for us and for all Christians shortly before he was taken to be crucified. Let us stand as we read the church covenant. I will lead in the reciting of our church covenant. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter to do covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship ordinances, disciplines, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotions, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all tattling, backbiting, intoxicating drinks as a beverage, to be safe in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, 
to remember one another in prayer, to aid one another in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy in feeling and Christian courtesy in speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it as a delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will, as soon as possible, unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Amen. Please remain standing. You may bow your heads if you wish for this prayer from John 17, 20 through 26. I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us, so that the world will believe you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, so they may be one as we are one. I in them, I am in them, and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. Father, I want these whom you have given me to be with me where I am. Then they can see all the glory you gave me because you loved me even before the world began. O oh, righteous Father, the world doesn't know you, but I do. And these disciples know you sent me. I have revealed you to them and I will continue to do so. Then your love for me will be in them. And I, in them, and I will be in them. Uh, I'm going to ask Larry to come and pray over the bread. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your Son Jesus, and that Lord, that now that we have been uh, justified by faith through Lord Jesus Christ, of what you've done for us on the cross and have been and have declared us to be righteous. Lord, we thank you and we honor you uh, for your broken body uh, that you gave for us to free us from our sins. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. As the deacons... Uh, get the bread and as they pass it out we are going to sing together the old rugged cross a cappella. on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame and I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, that old rugged cross so despised by the world has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. In the old rugged cross, 
stained with blood so divine, such a wonderful beauty I see. Till my trophies at last I lay down, I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it some day for a crown. From John six fifty eight, <clears throat> Jesus said, "I am the true bread that came down from heaven." Anyone who eats this bread will not die, as your ancestors did, even though they ate the manna, but will live forever. You me eat the bread. According to 1 Corinthians eleven twenty-five through 26 In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. I'm going to ask Brother Jerry to say the blessing on the cup. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come again to worship you uh, through this offering that we have lord today to offer to you what you've done for us father in shedding of your blood that we can have eternal life with you thank you jesus we praise you in jesus name amen amen go ahead as it is distributed we were going to sing together there is a fountain filled with blood there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains lose all their guilty stains lose all their guilty stains and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains the dying thief rejoice to see that fountain in his day and there may i though vile as he wash all my sins away wash all my sins away wash all my sins away and there may i though vile as he wash all my sins away dear dying lamb thy precious blood of God be saved to sin no more 
an appropriate verse to end on. Hebrews 9, 22. In fact, according to the law of Moses, nearly everything was purified with blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. And now, congregation, if you will read with me 1 John 1, 7. But if we are living in the light, as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. You may take the cup. According to Matthew 26, 30, they then sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. If you will stand with me, and we will sing uh, the song, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds Us. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together to hear some Bible verses and to recite some, well, at least one, uh, together, O oh Lord. And I pray that you would help our church to not only have the strongest possible relationship that each one of us individually can have with you as our Savior and to be in your grace and to walk in, in the Spirit, uh, but that we would also uh, look to the right and to the left and see our brother, our sister in Christ, and also have that bond together as a church like you intended. Oh, Lord, teach us, God, what it means to be the Enon Baptist Church of Pittsville, Missouri. In Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed.